All right guys, today I wanna to make a different kind of video. Today we're gonna to be talking about system design. And the reason why I wanna make this video is because I felt like when I was preparing for my interviews with Google and Facebook and other big companies, I felt like there was no good resource that was able to put system design in ways in terms that really just made sense. So I wanna try and do my best to do that today. So let's get into the video. Okay guys, so we are going to be talking about system design today. And system design is a really big part of interviews. Typically you have one system design interview with these larger companies and it's a very important topic to know. It's super, super important to be able to build systems that are scalable and efficient. So today we're gonna to be talking about system design in a metaphor. Today we're gonna to explain system design as a restaurant. And so typically in the real world, a system or an application is broken down into three parts. The first part is the front end, the second part is the logic layer, and the third part is the persistence layer. And whenever we build systems, we want our system to always be three things. We want our system to be fast, we want our system to be scalable, and we want our system to be resilient. And so we're gonna talk about this restaurant today, and just to be clear, our restaurant is going to represent the system as a whole. So it's gonna represent all those three things that we just said the front end, the logic layer, and the persistence layer. So first, let's get into the front end. The front end is anything that a client can see. And by client, I'm really talking about a computer, I'm talking about a phone, I'm talking about a tablet, a smart TV, anything that is requesting resources from your application is known as a client. And so in our case, we could think about clients as customers, okay? And so for the front end, customers are our clients, and the front end is represented as anything that the customer can see. So on a website, this would be like anything that you can actually see, but in our case of a restaurant, this is really gonna be our seats, this is gonna be our tables, this is gonna be our decor, our windows. Anything that the customer can see, including a menu, is seen as our front end. So that's pretty simple, that covers the front end layer. So now let's talk a little bit about the logic layer. So to talk about the logic layer, we're actually also going to talk about the menu. And the reason for this is because the menu is going to represent our API. And it sounds really scary, but all the API is, is an application programming interface. And in other words, it's all the ways you can interact with our restaurant or a system in the real world. So in our case, our menu is really our API. So the front end shows the user what they can do. And then the API is what allows them to do whatever they want to do. So for example, maybe on our menu, we have a burger. And so the burger is part of our API and the customer or our client can make a request for a burger using our API. And again, the menu items are really defining that API. So you can have a burger, you can order a sandwich, maybe there's a grilled cheese and a bunch of other things like drinks, etc., that the customer can ask for from our application. So a customer, again, which represents a client, their request is given to a server. And yes, I picked a server as the word for a reason. So a server in our case is really gonna double as a waiter or a waitress or a server, right? And then an actual computer server. In any kind of application in the real world, I'm talking about like a computer server. So it, just to be clear, it's gonna double as a server meaning a waitress and a server meaning a computer server. So clients requests are given to a server. Right, so let's imagine a super simple restaurant. We have one table, maybe one customer can sit at the table, and now we have one server that the customer can interact with and ask for things from the menu. So again, just to talk in now actual real programming terms, we have a front end that's making a request through our API, which is our menu. Our server will do something with that request. And so our server in this case will take the customer's request and handle it appropriately. So the server is going to go ahead and hand off the request or the order to the kitchen. And in our case, the kitchen is going to be the back end. And the reason why the back end is important, why it's represented as the kitchen, is because we don't know what happens on the back end as a customer. All I know is that when I ask for a burger, in 10 minutes, I receive a burger. I don't know the name of the cook who's preparing my burger. I don't know how it's being prepared. All I know is that if I ask for a burger, I will eventually receive my burger. So now that covers the logic layer of our system. Awesome, so this is great. So now we're gonna talk a little bit about scalability. So we now have the ability to take orders from our customers and bring them the appropriate responses. So what's our problem? 
The problem is that our application isn't scalable. So let's imagine now that we have one server and we have five tables. At a certain point, we're not gonna be able to efficiently serve all the requests that are coming from all these five tables with just one server. So what we need to do is we need to scale our system to handle more customers. So what we do is we're actually just gonna hire more servers in our case. But now, because we have more servers, we need to actually start delegating which servers handle which customer tables. And because of this, we need to introduce into our restaurant a manager. And in our case, or in an application's case, a manager is actually going to be a load balancer. And the job of the load balancer, or the manager, is to delegate which server handles which table's requests. I also want to make a quick note here that every incoming request in a real system would typically go to the load balancer first, which in our case is the manager which doesn't make a ton of sense in a restaurant scenario, but the idea is the same, right? Something is actually determining who is serving these requests. So again, it's going to be a manager in our case, and they are going to determine which servers are serving which customers. Awesome, so now we've talked a little bit about scalability and how we can deal with more customers coming to our restaurant. So now let's talk about speed. So by adding more servers, we're actually increasing the speed of our system because by adding more servers, this will reduce the time between customers deciding what they want and place their orders with their respective servers. And this in turn will actually help speed up the process of the customer receiving their order because the server will actually place the order to the kitchen even faster. So overall, our entire application is being sped up by adding more servers and now we can handle more traffic. So now let's talk about our persistence layer. Now that we've covered the front end layer and our logic layer, we need to talk about our persistence or our database level. And this is where things are stored permanently and remembered. So in our restaurant, this is the idea of our computer system. It's gonna keep track of how many orders we've served, how many customers have come in in a given day, how much money we've made, the checks for our customers, et cetera, et cetera. So our system's constantly updated as orders are made, as customers are served, as customers pay, as employees clock in and out, and the list kind of goes on and on. So it's our source of truth, really. All of our information is constantly updated, and we really, really, really rely on our system. However, the problem with our persistence layer, or in this case, our computer system, is that going to change things in this system can be very expensive and time consuming. So say we're getting a check for a particular table. That kind of takes a while. The server has to go walk all the way to the computer system. They have to bring up the check for the certain table that they're serving. They have to print it out and they have to bring it all the way back to the table. So in other words, database operations are expensive and it takes a while to get to and from the database. And one thing that we actually try and do to speed up this expensive operation is something called caching. So caching is something that we typically want to have between our logic layer and our persistence layer. So it's something that will help us avoid going to the database. It's something that will help us speed up our system. And in our restaurant, an example of one thing we might be able to cache, i.e. avoid going to our restaurant's computer system for, is a bill. Every time a customer orders something, our server can jot down on a notepad their order. And this notepad can actually serve as a cache. So now that any time the customer asks about their order or changes it, the server doesn't have to go all the way to the computer and instead the information is readily available on their notepad. This information can then be later transferred from our cache or the server's notepad to our computer system, which is our database, to be remembered and stored permanently. Finally, another thing that I'd like to talk about is resilience. So resilience is super important in a system in the real world. And so resilience, all it means is that when something goes wrong, things need to work as expected. So an example in our restaurant would be what happens if a server fails, right? And a server fails, meaning maybe our server calls in sick today. How do we respond? So in our restaurant, this could be addressed by the manager, which is the load balancer, having a new server report in for work, which is the equivalent really in the real world of spinning up a new server and placing it on the load balancer to serve requests in our application. It's worth noting as well that for resilience, you want to avoid any single points of failure, or the idea that if one part of your system breaks, everything breaks. 
I'm not going to talk about any more potential problems that could go wrong in our restaurant, but I definitely challenge you all to think about what would happen if the manager or the load balancer calls in sick for a restaurant, or something like our computer system crashing, which would be our database. Okay guys, I also want to note that there are lots of parts to a system in a real world application. However, this covers more or less the basics. Again, the front end layer, the logic layer, and the persistence layer, as well as how they interact. All right guys, if you guys found this video helpful, do me a favor, leave it a like and subscribe for more. I really encourage you guys to share this kind of video with people if you think people might need it. Again, when I started preparing for system design, this was not something that was there. This was not something that was kind of boiled down into a nice analogy. So if this was helpful, I'd really appreciate you guys sharing it and I'll see you guys next time.